Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Karina Lude Mental Gems, where we learn together, read together, but most importantly, grow together. Today I'm super excited because it is a book club day, but this will change your life. This will change your life. The game of life and how to play it was ahead of its time, and it's going to check you, okay? You cannot read this and I get something from it to make you successful, okay? I have all my key points here and I will be reading them because I was just taking notes, taking notes as I was uh, reading. And I also would like to tell you guys, if you cannot purchase the book, they do have the audio book here on YouTube. It's about two hours long because it is a very small book, okay? It's about two hours long. You can just play it. So one of the first lessons I'm gonna jump right in that I learned from this book is that the subconscious mind has no sense of humor. That was the first thing that stuck to me when I was like, ah. <sighs> We often joke ourselves into misery. What does that mean, Kareen? What does that mean? The focus of the book was just in the power of our conversation. There's another quote that she says, a person knowing the power of the word becomes very careful of his conversations, where she gave the example of this lady that used to always say and brag about how she had a lot. She had a big house. She had the lovely husband. She had all the kids and she was just living pretty well, but she kept complaining about everything and saying, I'd be happier living in a truck. And she was joking in her mind, joking, just saying that every time someone would compliment her life. And wouldn't you know it, years down the line, this lady lost everything and was literally living in a truck. She gave many more examples of these same situations with people. This has even happened to me in this year. I've learned this lesson from God. There was something that I was really, I kept making jokes about to my friends. Like, you know, when you are trying to be humble, somebody's saying something, you make little jokes that are self demeaning to yourself and you don't realize the power of those jokes that your brain don't see it as a joke. Even if you're trying to lose weight on my weight loss journey, I've been saying a whole bunch of things to myself because I was an athlete. I used to be with the muscles to the point where people used to even call me man because I literally had like bigger arms than Serena. Okay. <laughs> I was in there and then to see myself slowly start to lose that because you know you're working more you're indoors you all that I'm trying to get it back there's little jokes I would say to, to myself and quiet and even out loud and to others when we talk and I start to see that these jokes start to really uh, manifest in my life and I'm like whoa you know this is powerful and the Bible even says that do not waste your time in idle talk God even says he hate a person who talks too much many words bring on what does the Bible say many words bring on corruption it brings on confusion talking too much and sometimes in talking we make these self-deprecating jokes that attract all of these things into our lives so I love that she said this that the subconscious doesn't have a sense of humor it don't know if you're joking or not there's certain jokes you shouldn't even say to your kids there's certain insults even in anger you shouldn't say to your kids it's like you're whooping them oh you just you just like your daddy or you're gonna be this you're gonna be a little thief look you're gonna end up in jail you're speaking that energy onto your child and God says life and death is in the tongue. Second quote is substitute fear with faith. I love when she talks about fear. Fear cripples. We attract what we fear. So fear nothing. Okay. Let me tell you something, a story of mine and my old house. When I was in elementary school, our old pink house, we had this pink house. It was a tiny house. We had a huge backyard. The backyard was bigger than the house. Okay. And it was a lot of trees. We had grapefruit tree. We had uh, lime trees. We had strawberries that were growing. We had berries, green peas. We had a whole bunch of stuff in the backyard. So that attracts all animals also so I used to have this fear though I love animals I physically don't want to touch a snake you know so I had a crippling fear of snakes even though I've never seen one up close before but every time I'd go out in the backyard to play I would think of snakes I would tell my sister there's possibly we could touch it one day I go to pick up a stick it was a big stick and I was gonna act like I was Moses <laughs> and guess what the stick starts to wrap around my hands and I realized it was a giant snake and guess what I did I flung it so fast just the reflexes it flew off my hands and I ran inside and I was like oh my goodness and my dad told me this and I you know as you get older you start to see what your parents were telling you were always true and how wise they are my dad's one of the wisest men I know and even as a little girl he told me this you are the reason why you held that snake because I was just telling everybody the story Everybody was shocked. It was like you kept thinking about all you did was talk about snakes every time <laughs> you attracted that to you 
what you feared came to you. And oftentimes even this year, something I feared, something I've always feared even getting on YouTube that would happen to me, happened to me. It happened to me. And it's crazy that you constantly keep thinking about what's bad. You're thinking about accidents. You're thinking about your house getting robbed. You're thinking about your kids falling sick. You're thinking about this X, Y, Z. Constantly the fear and anxiety cripples you. And then you start to see they start to happen. Cause that's what you focus on. Shift your focus instead and start thinking on the positive. Now, when I think of animals, I don't think of them in fear. God created them. Even if I were to meet an animal, nothing would happen to me in the name of Jesus. I know that he created them. He shut the lion's mouth and Daniel, right? And the lion's den, he shut their mouth. What do I have to be afraid of a snake that God created? You know, instead you remove that and you actively now I'm always at a, uh, at a zoo. I'm always at a national park. I'm always around animals and wildlife. It's not that, oh, you're being risky, you're this, you're that. It's that what I fear, I face it and until it no longer becomes a fear for me. Even biblically, it says, Jesus asked, why are you afraid? This is all in her book. I love this about her, okay? Jesus even asked, why are you afraid? Have you no faith? Fear eliminates faith. You have to replace fear with faith, okay? You cannot have faith if you're afraid. God says, perfect love casts out fear. I did not give you a spirit to fear, but to conquer and to overcome, right? Why did he say that? He knows fear cripples his people. Move and faith and boldness. He said, come with boldness before the throne and ask, <laughs> okay? He didn't say come in fear. We shouldn't move in fear upon anyone. And what does the Bible say? My, one of my favorite verse, I have a lot of favorite verses, but this one, always since I was a little girl they ingrained it in our head not even Psalms 23 is that fear not what men can do to you God listen let me tell y'all woe be to him who put his faith and chariot in in men and not God you cannot fear what men can do to you when God created men okay Moving in fear is not even biblical it's not even a thing that comes from God the Bible also says ask and it shall be given to you and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened into you. And that's Matthew seven, verse seven. Also in this book, she stated it is that speaking and attracting things. Yeah. There's people, wicked people that take these, um, these truths and they kind of twist it and then have little non-biblical things attached to it, but they all get their inspiration from the Bible manifest it at biblically and attracting things to you is something from the Bible. It's God says you ask. And if it is in his will, it is good for you. That's the part I'll say with the book. We'll wait. We'll say for the last, but you ask everything in good faith. You ask everything with boldness, knowing that you should already receive it. It will be given to you. It is men's only enemy fear. Fear of lack, fear of failure, fear of sickness, fear of loss, and feeling of insecurity on some plane. Those are our weaknesses. We stay so focused on them. It, fear creates illness. It gives you anxiety. What do you think anxiety is? It's fears. All your fears in one. Overthinking. One of the, I was on anxiety medications, y'all. Me, I was struggling with anxiety for so long. It showed on my face. I was afraid of everything. Every time you get in a car, you just traumatize. It's part of how your upbringing sometimes when, you know, we left Haiti and we came to America and you're in the hood, it's traumatizing. You think every day I used to have nightmares of someone shooting me in the head or accident here or this, that, like all these terrible things. And it used to cripple me. And then I have anxiety of people talking to people. I was on anxiety meds. It's like, God, it's not your will for me to be on medications for the rest of my life. And I had to tackle that and I realized anxiety is nothing but fear of everything, of not knowing what tomorrow will bring, feeling fear of failure. And once you start to tackle those issues, you will see a transformation in your life. Fear is an enemy. It's not your friend. Anxiety is an enemy. It's not your friend. And I know social media make us call these things into our life because there's lots of posts talking about anxiety, everybody glamorizing anxiety, depression, sadness, being the sad, cool girl, the emo girl, the distressed, I need help to be saved or guy, you know, that troubled guy. We keep attracting that to us. We're sharing things, telling people. I know, I know somebody that keeps 
labeling themselves with all these illnesses mentally constantly oh that must be my problem oh i have depression oh i have adhd oh i have bipolar oh i have this it's like stop saying that to yourself every little post somebody posts because you relate to one thing on there you're already labeling yourself with this and then you start to see you start attributing more and more of these and you start to feel more and more crippled more and more sad now you give yourself an excuse to why you're living this miserable life because you brought all of that to yourself there is no peace or happiness for men until he has erased all fear from the subconscious no, you will not be happy. My happiness didn't start happening for me until I started tackling the root of my anxiety to where I'm like, I'm not taking these meds. And I didn't. I told my friends, I made an announcement. I sent it in the group chats. I'm like, listen, I'm on a fast <laughs> for my little feel goods. Okay, I refuse. And I hold myself accountable. I'm like, I'm not going to take this. I do not need it. Fear is misdirected energy and must be redirected or transmuted into faith. Transfer your fears into faith. Man should watch himself hourly to detect if his motive or action is fear or faith. What motivates you? When you get up every day to go out to work and grind and get yours, is it fear of being poor? Is it fear of losing your house? Is it fear of not being able to provide? Or is it faith that something's better is gonna come from this? My work ethic, I'm gonna grow. Every morning you wake up, what motivates you to work out? Is it fear? Oh my goodness, I'm going to be big again. I'm going to be this. I'm going to, what is it? Or is it, yo, motivation for, to be healthy, to live a long life, to feel good about myself. What motivates you? Every reason why you do something should be based on faith and not fear. Cause then if you fear why you're cooking your meals and the only reason you're cooking a healthy meal is cause you fear having diabetes or cancer like your uncle or your aunt or whatever. And every time you're cooking, you're making the food toxic to your body. You're making it toxic. Remove that fear. Like I'm eating this in good faith that I know I am well, I will be well. I will live a long flourishing life. All these disease, these generational illnesses is not for me. He also says in the book, all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive it. You must act as if you had already received. Men can only receive what he sees himself receiving. You cannot receive what you do not see for yourself. You're lying to yourself. And a lot of us are lying. If you don't see success, if you don't see happiness, if you don't see peace, if you don't see joy, all you put in front of your face 24 seven is the opposite. How will you receive that? You won't know what to do with it. You have to see someone. I watched this documentary on this uh, beautiful young lady who won the lottery, I think over a hundred million dollars. And she was in a mansion. She, she was straight from the hood. She came into a mansion and the mansion was a dump messy, didn't know what to do with the house. She squandered all her money. This lady didn't have it. It was three years later, she was dead, broke. She didn't prepare herself for that. You're going after, you're going after the dream. You're going after the vision, but you're not preparing yourself for it. And fear does not prepare you for when you receive that vision that you've been after. Once you receive that dream, when God's like, hey, I'm opening them doors for you. But the whole time in your preparing season, you just prepared your mind with fear when you get there. That's what happened to me this year. I'm saying with something with YouTube. I'm telling y'all, this stuff is real. I prepared myself to reach that place with fear. That when I got there, I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know what to do with it. And God's like, now you see, you have to take a step back, retrain your mind. Whatever I give you is meant for you. And whatever is taken from you, it's because I ordained it to be taken from you. No matter what happens, you will not move in fear. No matter what happens, who comes after you, what is done to you. What I have given you is everlasting. And that should remove fear. Fear will, will allow them doors to be open and you can lose it. Also, you do not ask for something and don't move like you already received it. I remember when I wanted my, I had a, this terrible car. I had this Chrysler convertible. Oof, it's a little white car. And it was cute. It was what I wanted at the time. And it started breaking down with me, stopping with me on the streets. I'm having tire issues, engine issues, constantly calling my big bro like, yo, I'm hooking up, I'm stuck. Calling people like, yo, I need a new car. I need a new car. And at the time I wasn't making enough coins to get a car, but I'm like, 
My big bro asked me straight up, the most successful person I know, the most successful person I know. So God put everybody in your life for a reason. He would always help everybody out, you know, financially, his friends and stuff who ask him uh, for assistance with stuff. It was not an issue. He's given many people cars. He's, I've seen him do this. But when it's me, it's like, no, you need to train yourself to get things for yourself. And I was never bitter. I used to be annoyed by it. Like what, I have to be really in the dumps for my big bro to come for me, you know? But it taught me a lesson because when I started making big moves on myself, just to see the proud on his face to be like, this is why I didn't help you with anything because I saw it in you. And I didn't want to cripple you by always making it easy, always making it easy. But he was the one that told me this, like, what car do you want? And I'm thinking he's about to give me my car because look, my car keeps stopping. Just help me out, I'll pay you back. <laughs> I was like, I want, a Mercedes CLA 250, that's what I want. <laughs> Which is a tiny little girly Mercedes. And I was like, that's my dream car, that's what I want. He was like, okay, start saving. Get that credit right. And I'm like, I'm never gonna get this car. I was like, nope, if that's your dream car, that's what you want, see it, you will get it. He said that. I kept seeing this car, I would dream of the car, I save pictures of the car on my phone, I would imagine what I'm gonna do when I get the car, and my mind forced me to do everything to get it positive, meaning I woke up every day, like how am I gonna get this car? I started working, that's when I found my, my, my first little corporate job I told you guys about. I was just in college. Guess what guys? I started, opportunities started coming to me to work for it and I really, the year was not over and I got my car. I was so proud. There was a place I wanted to live, my first apartment when I was gonna live by myself, venture out. My roommate, my bestie at the time, got married and went on to be with her husband. I was scared, I never lived by myself before. Me and my big sis, we always shared a room. You know, I, I just, I was no longer in my parents' home. What am I gonna do? I found this apartment. I said, it's my first time living by myself. I value security. So I want to be in the best apartment. I don't want to be in any apartment where I don't feel secure. I don't feel safe. Anybody could come in. I drove and was going to those type of apartments even though the funds wasn't there yet. Cause in a Haitian household, they really do believe and you got to forge that way for yourself at a certain age. Yeah, they'll hold your hands. Like I still could probably ask my dad for money. He'll give it, but it's something in you that you grow up with. Soon as you're like a certain age, you're like, I need to get out there. It's my time to start helping my parents out, my younger siblings, my little cousins, you know? It's, it's that age, you know? I just said, I saw the apartment. I told my bestie, that's the apartment I want. It's like, girl, do you see the monthly? I said, that's what I want. Everything, I started acting like I already had that apartment. I started planning the furniture that I was gonna put in that apartment. The bed, the type of bed that I would want, the type of curtains, the type of dishes. I was saving dishes on Amazon. I got that apartment. I got that apartment and I stopped and I said, wow. I said I would get it, glory be to God. But it's the lessons I've learned from a very young age. Anything you want, guys, you can get. You have to already act like you got it, move like you got it, believe that you got it, and work. You notice in the story, even in the book, she never said the people sat down and it just came to them. They did what they had to do. God says many, multiple times in the Bible, he doesn't bless lazy hands. I did what I had to do, I looked at how, and I always say never say you can't do something or you'll never be able to do get something. Say how can I, what can I do to, you know? I worked, I worked, I worked, I worked, and everything I wanted was in reach. So now I'm looking back at the goals I had, surpassing each of them, and now you're creating bigger goals. You're working for bigger goals. Now, the next lesson is what you wish on others will come back to you. If you wish success for others, success will come to you. If you wish the opposite, then you will attract the opposite. Stop talking bad about people, wishing bad on people. You're looking, comparing, competing with people. I, I'm a big advocate for not competing, okay? Whatever you wish on somebody, you wish death on somebody, can come back to you. You wish that this person won't succeed, they won't have more followers than you, that they won't have a bigger home than you, all those things, and you start to see you're crippling your own blessing. 
lessons. You stopping someone, you blocking someone else's blessings. You got to do right by it. I found myself in many positions in the past blocking other people's blessings. And I was like, that's the work of the enemy, Kareen. Come on. And I had to do right by it. I'm like, God, fix my soul. I want to do right by that person. And I work hard to undo those damages. Like, your success does not stop mine. Why would I do that? I understand we in a society where we compete to be the best in school, compete to be number one. Like, we're just in a very competitive environment constantly, okay? But we have to release wanting evil for people. And she spoke a lot in the book about how you should bless your enemies instead of cursing them. She even gave an example of a married woman who her husband was taken by another young lady and she kept cursing that young lady. She knew she was with a married man, this and that. And then Florence Shin, the writer of this book, told her, listen, stop cursing that woman. Bless her instead and be done with it. And then you will attract the person that was meant for you. And guess what? That lady was like, Psh, she cursed Florence. And guess what? Later on down the line, she found herself attracted to a married man. Something she thought she would never do. There's things we say we would never do and we curse other people who did it. We judge other people who did it only to find ourselves in the same place. Your enemies, I found this. Everyone that ever did me wrong that I didn't respond to, I ignored. I just let it be and I'm blessed. Like, Lord, they don't know. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. Just protect me guide me through this and let it be. I've been better for it. I grow more. I elevate more. You let it be. Do not ever curse anybody, but speak positivity unto people. Stop being a roadblock for people. Stop being a hater. Stop being envious. Stop being jealous. Look at that young lady that her friends took her life in Mexico, beat her to death. What do you think? What good can come to those people? And then also the next quote is unforgiveness causes illness, replace bitterness with love. She spoke about how a lot of sicknesses do come from just anger, blood pressure, aneurysms, fear, also anxiety and fear, anger, bitterness, all those things fester and create illnesses in your body. It stays in your back, your neck, your shoulders, everything. But laughter and a smile brings joy to the body. Good thoughts for other people brings health to the bones. Next quote is, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which spitefully use you and persecute you. That will be difficult. Pray on it, pray on it, pray on it. I promise you right now, think of a person you really don't like right now. Somebody you really can't deal without. Think about that person and in your heart say, I forgive you. I forgive myself for disliking you. And I pray health over you, goodness over you, success over you, because you do not know anything you're doing. And if you're just envious of them for no reason, you ask God, fix my soul, remove this from me, put love in me for this person, make it easy for me to get along with people. I promise you, practice this and see how your life changed. You can come back to this video, come back and see how things changed for you, but you holding on to this, is gonna just take away from your success. Next quote is, there is a place that you are to feel and no one else can feel it. Something you are to do, which no one else can do. You gotta move in that. My assignment here on earth is not anybody else's assignment. Billions of years ago, God knew I would be here. He chose me specifically and made me who I am for this assignment. No one else has that assignment. And that is true for all of you. There is a purpose you're supposed to feel. And when you know that, how can you compete with someone else? How can you look to what somebody else is doing? My purpose is not your purpose. There's something I was put on this earth to do that you cannot do. That's why God put me here. Why looking at you is not going to do anything for me in this purpose. Next quote is, no man attracts money if he detests it and those who have it. Money is necessary, a friend. But you should not put money above God and above people. Do not hoard money only for yourselves and not share your blessings. I did several videos on this. One of my oldest videos, the first video that I posted on here, the first video ever, I'm putting the end card for y'all. Attracting money, I speak about this. A lot of people hate money and everyone who has it. God didn't call for that. Solomon was the richest man who ever lived. Everyone God dealt with had money. 
all his leaders, David, Solomon, Saul, Abraham, Jacob. I thought they were poor, Joseph. Why do you hate it? It's a friend. You're not supposed to put it above God, above people. You're supposed to use it to help people. God talks about the church. Bring food into my storehouses, money to help the widows, the fatherless, the motherless, the homeless. There's a work you're supposed to do with that money too, instead of hoarding it to buy purses and shoes and flaunt and, and, and then, you know, all these lavish things that you're doing. Yes, you can do those things too, because God calls for you to live a fulfilled life also, but help out, help out your peoples, man. Help out your peoples, help out other people. Ask God sometimes, like one other thing that I got from my big bro, even going to a Haitian restaurant once we saw a, a young lady whose head was not, all there you know she she was known for that in the community people make fun of her and everything he went to that restaurant because she was in there trying to get food he told the lady every time she comes in here for food give it to her i will pay you when i come and get my food just keep a tab and he has done that you don't do it for rewards for people but i've watched how his life has multiplied his family's life his wife his children the blessings that come to them the favor that comes to them just from things like that. And I learned from stuff like that. Like it shouldn't take nothing out of you. Your elderly parents, when the last time you went, you always went to your parents' house to take every food out their fridge once you move out, right? Toilet paper, all that. When's the last time you, you made a little money, you go in a Cabo, you go in there. Did you send your parents a little something just to say thank you? Let me come stock up your fridge today, even if you got it. You know what I mean? Just to say thank you. Now the next one is if you do not run your subconscious mind yourself, someone else will run it for you. And this goes on to say horoscopes and psychics attract horrible karma. Example of, I'm gonna give y'all an example of a man which she gave in the book also. This man that went to see a psychic that told him you are gonna die in three months. And this man refused. He was like, you know what? Why did I even come here? Lord, forgive me, this and that. Let go of everything. I was like, I don't receive this. This man lived on for years and success and was like, a lot of people would go to that same lady, believe everything and take it. And it actually happened to them in their lives. If you were a person that look at horoscope daily in the past, before I really had my coming to Jesus, and I'm not judging anybody who does that. But when I was in high school, middle school, I used to look at my horoscopes, you know, Scorpio, what's going to happen today, this and that. And I would see them happen for real, and I'd be like, oh my goodness, this is so true. And then I would get some bad ones and it would happen too. Until I'm starting like, who's the author of my life? Like, no, no, I refuse this. I refuse this. You don't know what, what they can tell you and you're just gonna receive it. She talks, she goes lengthy in the book with that. If y'all interested, it's just not to take, don't let no one speak anything over your life, okay? I wasn't quite okay with in the book, was like, you know, coming back, um, reincarnation, <laughs> coming back um, at, at, into what you manifested in this life. And so I don't believe in reincarnation or anything like that. I do believe when you die, you're dead, you're resting, and your soul goes back to God until his coming, and then you rise again, and your soul comes back. But you're sleeping, you're dead, that's that. They know nothing, they know no pain, they're just waiting for the return of Christ. And and to them, the return of Christ is a blink of an eye. That's what that's what the Bible says. Once you die, Jesus came for you. A lot of y'all are like, Jesus ain't never coming back. He's taking forever, sweetie. The minute you die, that's it. Jesus came back for you. What you rushing him for? The minute that breath is taken, it won't seem but a second. You're waking up to his glory. Okay? So <laughs> Jesus is coming back soon for you because you don't know the day or the hour that may be your last. But I don't believe in reincarnation. I'd say that as far as that. But for those who do, they might find that tidbit very interesting. But she does focus on the Bible and literature. She's a spiritualist, I believe, also. So it's kind of like Christian and spiritualist themes. So you have to know uh, what to take based on your beliefs from it and what not to take. And always pray when you read anything and have discernment over every book I read. I always pray that God shows me what to take and what to reject and what can benefit my life. It is a very transformative book. It is mostly focused on just positivity, not having enemies, just living a, a life full of fulfillment. I love this so much. I wish you guys could check it out, listen to the audio book. I cannot wait for the next book because I had in my mind to do Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, but this was the one that 
God told me to do. <laughs> so that's the one you guys got first. So sometimes I have in mind what book's coming next. And then it's like, no, this book instead. So I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, comment, share with somebody. If you like the music you're listening to, go support my big bro. Okay. The link is in the description. I love you guys so much. Until next time. Mwah.